we're going to start with a 15-minute discussion between me and one of my personal heroes, Guy La Liberté. He is the founder and inventor of Cirque du Soleil, which, if you are, please sit down, Guy. Um, if you, like me, are a Zeitgeist veteran, you will have seen some of the wonderful Cirque performers. Uh, and I'm going to have a moment of patriotism. I'm Canadian. And uh, having been here for a few years, they gave me a little bit of a say in which panel I would moderate. And I said I wanted to do Guy's panel because I'm so proud of everything he's done. Uh, so that's my affection declared. And what I wanted to start by asking you about Guy is you're really, you've come up with a whole new artistic genre, something that had never been done before, and it's also a successful business. Correct. How did you get that idea? Well, actually, uh, I don't think we reinvent anything. Uh, the, uh, the business of circus was existing before us. Uh, I think we just reshape it and treat it in a contemporary way uh, by uh, bringing directors, lighting designer, uh, circus at the time we start were a little dusty especially in North America. So we, I, th I think we had an opportunity, we had a crack in the a little window open for us. We took it and uh, we work creatively very uh, specifically with, with what people of theater was doing. So we brought a little bit all the Broadway treatment, uh, theatrical treatment, dance treatment in uh, our old business. Did you always want it to make a lot of money, or were you an artist wanting to just sort of express yourself? Actually, it's funny. My, my first dream in life uh, was I always want to travel, and that was what I was looking for. The fastest way I find to, to achieve my dream was to pick up the accordion of my father and hit the road at the age of 15 and being a busker because I had no, no Have business. Have accordion will travel? Uh, actually, it's a small box. It's very easy, uh, very light hit the road. I'll uh, tell that to my kids when they want to go. <laughs> well, actually, I decided to go to the school of life instead of being going to regular school. And so my first, my first job was, uh, my first dream was to travel. And then by traveling, I learned the pleasure of entertaining people. And this is really where I said, wait, wait a minute. There might be something that uh, could f fit together. And uh, then I started to organize uh, uh, start up a theater troupe on stills, organize a f street performing festival, and then we had the opportunity in, in 1984, there was the celebration of the 450th anniversary of Discovering Canada. There was a lot of money for cultural activities. Uh, we were successful. Government grants, crucial for Actually, the not grants, it was a contract. Everybody said it was a grant, it was a deal. There was money, <laughs> there was money. They asked us to present a project. We win the project, we fought for it because all the institution, you have to understand uh, clowns and circus kill or street performer was not, were not recognized in the art industries or in the art sector. There was no subsidies available for us. Basically, the philosophy was about pay them a sandwich, for, supply them a corner of a street, and they'll entertain you for 30 minutes. So, <laughs> so, so it was also part of our quest and, 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 and will to try to make recognize that art form through doing Cirque du Soleil. So we had our first contract. We lived uh, the first year of Cirque du Soleil in a very strange way because we were outside the big city, so the first month was a mess. We lost our big top over a storm. We didn't know how to put it up. Uh, there was a, a lot of learning, hard learning process, but the advantage we had, we, was, we were away of the big city, so focus was more on the other activity. So when we came in, this, and it was a mess for the other thing too. So when we arrived in town, we were gear up, we were all ready, and we became like the, the success of the season. And then this is what we, we worked on and built on after. So but the, the dream was traveling. For the me dream to, was to, traveling. For me to do the Cirque du Soleil was a job, was something that would permit me to probably go around the world with if it was successful. And now it's taking you into outer space. Correct. Well, it did. It did. It did. This is actually true. He's been to outer space. Uh, but we'll get to that. Um, so these are very scrappy beginnings. School of life. You're on the street with your accordion. Now you're running this huge business. Mm -hmm. You're close to hitting a billion dollars, right? Actually, if everything goes well uh, this year, we should. But uh, we had the earthquake in Japan and some floating in, uh, Cincinnati, in Cincinnati last week, two weeks ago. So I think we'll be missing it this year. Okay. It doesn't matter. Almost. Almost. Yeah. 
So, so a, how, do you remain in, how do you remain innovative in the company? You know, you're, think, you're big, you're making a lot of money, surely well, bureaucracy creeps in. How, how, how do you keep Cirque alive? Well, we're, first, we're a creative company, so, so uh, or core business is to create thing. We had to organize ourselves business-wise because now we have 5,000 people working around the world uh, from different countries, in different countries around the world, so it, it needs a very good organization. <gasps> Uh, which I have, I have amazing people. And creatively, it's to, to really try to, to, every time that we start a new project, is, is to start from a white page. And then if you give the opportunity to creative people to express their creativity, their craziness, and uh, you establish also, uh, I would say, a critical path to do things, uh, then, then it, it usually works well. In 25 years, we, we had one, I would say, consider one creative failure. Uh, all the other ones were hit and run, uh, it, 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 Omer, Omer run. And, uh, and it's amazing to work with great creative people around the world. But you know, at the end, I always had, had established four conditions before doing a project. First is the creative challenge that the project represents. And trust me, we had put away a lot of other opportunity. Like we did put away the opportunity of doubling uh, our show, you know, multiplying the same show like Phantom of the Opera, they will do 10 production around the world. Same time, we always refuse that. We want to work on one of a kind show. Why is that? Because this is what we want to do. This is a decision, uh, actually, which was probably not a good business decision uh, in terms of money, but this is what we want to do. This is what I was looking for, is doing <laughs> one show and create another one. So for me, first on the top of the line before I decide a project is the creative challenge to things. Uh, the second thing is the people you work with because we do partnership or we choose people to work in each of our projects. So I'm a people, I'm a person or a people person. I like to work in a physical environment with people and uh, I like to have partner that I feel good with. So the qualification of the project, second one, is in regard to the people you work with. Third come the money part, uh, where it have to be in, a, in, in it. Um, so if, if the budget and everything goes well, then uh, well, on paper, because you never know in reality what will happen, but at least on paper it have to fit. And the fourth thing is the integration of uh, uh, a social engagement. I think in every company, uh, it's not after that you have to integrate or uh, put in place philanthropy. It has to be integrated in your business model, in your engagement in, uh, in a project. So those are the four conditions that, uh, that before we give a go to a project. So let's talk about that social engagement. Why is it so important and how do you do it? Well, why is it important? Uh, because I think my mother, my, par my father, <laughs> my parents t taught me some things in that regards when I was a kid. Uh, they, uh, they show me very early in my life that uh, we were privileged of having our three meals a day of a glass of water around uh, uh, every day. They were showing me uh, that reality of this world was not only my nice little uh, neighbor, you know, in my neighborhood, in the house that where I was living in, but there was country where people were dying of things. So they always put a very big importance of of taking care and, and, and be respectful of what you have in life. And once in the street, even in the street, I was a busker, uh, it started there. There was people in, in, in a worse condition than I was as a busker. There was uh, people dying of not having access to, to food. So even getting my own money as a street performer, I was giving some to, to those people. So for me, it was integrated through all my education. Uh, and then by traveling, obviously, uh, around the world while well, I got in touch with some reality of this, this life. And I'm just convinced that, uh, you know, it's not about philanthropy, it's integration for me uh, in our daily life. It's the responsibility that we have uh, as people who lead or people who run business, government people, uh, company leaders, uh, but also individual. I think the solution will be global. It's not only the responsibility of government, neither company leader, but also individual to integrate uh, this philosophy or this, this, this important aspect of a global community to help each other in their daily life. And why choose the particular philanthropy that you have? 
Well, this is not the first one. We have other, I, I, like I said, it's something that had been integrated in Cirque du Soleil. Our first philanthropy was the Street Kids. We have a foundation uh, in Cirque du Soleil that's been there f almost since the beginning. It's called Cirque du Monde. Uh, and it's all about w the kids in the streets, that homeless little kids. Uh, and we do program around the world. We dedicate 1% of our revenue uh, to, uh, to, for this foundation. And with that 1%, we usually multiply that 1% by another f four times. So we were able to, re to uh, generate about uh, four or five times the, the money toward the, uh, the foundation. And, then to and, and did you start with that one because of your experience working on the well, street the, yourself yeah, and, and well, other performers? Uh, for us at that time, it was a natural one because we were coming from the street. Uh, and it was for normal for us to, to choose uh, to give back where we were coming from and not forgetting where we were coming from. Uh, the second one was uh, One Drop, which is the water, uh, which I started in 2007. For me, again, it was a reflection I made. Uh, we were at the edge of celebrating the 25th anniversary of Cirque du Soleil. Uh, I had clearly two options. One was to celebrate with feast and bragging that we are what we are. Uh, it's not my type. Uh, so we did celebration internally, but we dedicate uh, our celebration by the commitment of 25 years toward the, the, the One Drop Foundation. So I personally pledge money. Uh, we made a deal with Cirque du Soleil for the next 25 years. Uh, and water is now a very, very important uh, uh, activities in, within neither, uh, with my life and, and uh, Cirque du Soleil uh, uh, company. And what significance, what impact does that have inside the company? It does have a lot of impact because if, when you choose uh, philanthropy, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not to make uh, feel good things. Uh, and especially when you pick up a subject like water, uh, before going out there on the, on the public scene and, and, and raising awareness, money, and doing project on the field, uh, you have to first look inside your company. And when we did the checklist of things, well, we're far away of being consequent of what we were proning, you know, in terms of... of uh, so what were you doing that was really bad? Well, just the use of plastic bottle, bo plastic bottle of water in the company. This is, this, this is something that was just not impossible if you go out Glad there. Glad to see glass on I the like table I like to see here, glass on the yeah. table. Actually, I probably would have passed a comment that I didn't want to sit down with a plastic bottle. Uh, you know, there's more water used to a plastic and the waste that it creates or the envir environmental impact. So those, uh, so we changed all those habits. We looked all on our energy, uh, water consumption things, uh, uh, and there was a checklist of about 200 something, and we still not have complete the, the, the correction of our behavior in Cirque du Soleil in that regards. Do you have another idea in mind, or are you going to stick with this one? Well, this one is a big one. Uh, you know, I truly believe that uh, water is probably the most important uh, environmental or, or humanitarian issue to address. Um, it is at the center of every, uh, if you look, um, biodiversity, the situation of women in the world, uh, children, education, health. Um, you you see water at the center of every of those aspects. So I think water is uh, a very, very important issue. Uh, if we address water first, we'll probably be able to set a very strong base for the evolution of other aspects of philanthropy or humanitarian thing. And plus, I truly believe that the biggest next human humanitarian crisis that this planet will face eventually if we don't take care of, it's water. You know, there's, uh, there's global warning coming in. The first impact is toward water. Look what's going on on the planet. So for me, it's clear. And, and is that 25-year commitment important? Do you think it's important to stick with something? I think it's important to have long-term commitment to things. Uh, it's, it's not a question of being fashion fashionable. Uh, water is pretty fashionable right now. Well, it is. It is. And, and, and actually, I'm very happy to see that water is kind of raising, because when you look at all those summits, of global warming, it's been uh, very, very difficult to put water at the agenda, actually. It's, there's many, many other subjects that have been uh, treated, integrated in the agenda, but water has not been pointed first as a priority. And I believe it's a priority. 
and uh, why the long-term commitment in, in, in terms of, uh, of, of, of for people to integrate things? Because it's really with, with deep work that you arrive to things. If you just do a gesture of signing a check before and feel good things, um, I, I just think it's, it's, not, uh, it's not enough. Uh, you need to much more solid commitment and long-term commitment is very, very important. Like I believe that new startup company in these days have to integrate in their business model. Even the before they've started to make money? I think it's part of, uh, it has to be part of, of... Just because uh, journalists will say nice things about you or...? No, 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 no. I think this is something. And you know, I'm a work in progress myself. Sig de Soleil is a work in progress by, uh, by itself. You know, we're learning things. I wish that I could have done it before. Uh, uh, we start with Sig de Soleil. Uh, actually, we almost did it. But, uh, you know, when you look again what's going on around, uh, uh, there is uh, change in, in terms of what, how we do business that have to take place. Uh, I don't have all the answer. I don't pretend I have all the answer. But I certainly know one thing is the integration in, uh, in new startup company in terms of, in, in the mission and the values of a company, uh, philanthropy is very, very important. How the detail to apply it, I don't have all the recipe. I'm not Mr. Magic. I'm just a little, I believe I'm just trying to take care of my garden, my small garden. I don't pretend I want, I'm capable of changing the world, uh, but I certainly know after 50 years now that my garden look nice. And if it could inspire other people to do a nice garden, perfect. This is where I, I am standing now. I'm not, uh, I'm not raising any fly, taking any hammer and hitting on anybody's head. Uh, I prefer to try to touch the heart of people. And, uh, and I believe that uh, emotion, and if you touch them to the heart, it stays longer than if you take a hammer and bang on the head of somebody. This is how I am. OK, those are some pretty good metaphors there. And, and I thought you would be pushing more on the side of magic than the nice garden that we I'm should all ground, admire. I'm but pretty grounded, too. You know, you're not the, I guess this is the topic of what we got. If you want to talk about fantasy, artistic, that's yes, but I don't think this is the... Uh, fantasy is for the stage, gardens are for your philanthropy? 